Bowman's capsule. Why pump whoever name that, but yeah. Then now, these capillaries basically filter out the basic things that are in the system. And then also, so it filters out every little small thing. So the molecules, the glucose, the amino acids, the sauce, the urea, water, they filter out everything, right? That's like a perfect strainer. Then now, after I do that now, the filtered blood moves down the nephron. Now, the convoluted tubule absorbs the good stuff. So your amino acids, your proteins, your glucose, most of the salts and some of the water. So that's what a convoluted tubule does, right? Um, for those who it's streaming on YouTube, you can head to the YouTube page at the end and the information will be there so you can rewatch. All right. So what am I there? Then no, these capillaries. Uh, I'm hearing myself. The basic things that oh, okay. Now the rest of the water and urea moves through the nephron. Then it buck up on my little friend here where it's called the Lupa Henley. The purpose of the Lupa Henley is to, that is where most of the water absorption happens. The Lupa Henley where most of the water absorption ha happens. Now, I want to tell you something. There is a animal, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the animal, the kangaroo rat. Your teacher ever mentioned him yet? No, sir. Okay. The kangaroo rat is a sexy likes to ask about it sometimes. The kangaroo rat lives in Australia. It has the most concentrated urine in the entire world. Its urine content is approximately, I think, about 0.5% water. The rest of it is straight urea. So I'm literally a pee, pee syrup. The point that it is this. The longer your loop of Henley, and that's even a question that came on the exam at one point. The longer your loop of Henley, we think of the more what? Water. More water, exactly. So the longer the loop of Henley, the more water you can absorb. And you think the kangaroo rat has a long loop of Henley or a short loop of Henley? Long. Very long. Because the fact say it absorbs almost all our water. But question, here's a question. What about environment do you think it lives in? Sunny, desert, cold? Desert. 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 So you understand how structure relates to function. So the fact that it have a long loop of Henley means that it must live in the desert. Unlike penguins that have a very short loop of Henley, and you know, so the penguin lives in the cold area. So it no need for all you know about more for water. All right. How long is it? Oh, I think about like three micrometers. And you look on it, oh, that's so long. Oh, I look at him, I think it's like 0.5 micrometers. Yeah. Yeah, you can probably wrap around a dot. Yeah, trust me, very small. No, we have the renal artery, the renal vein, the convoluted tubules, and these are the functions for each of them. All, so the proximal and the distal, the, that's the main point of it. Right? So these are the parts and what them do. The renal blood, you know, so takes, um, renal artery takes things to the kidney, renal veil takes it away, convoluted tubules, they do the absorption, the Bowman's capsule, that's where the filtration happens. Then now the collecting duct, you know, so the collecting duct are where the urine set out. And this is our little nephron. So if you want to snap a pick at it, it's up to you. And we have a little loop of Henley. And there's a hormone. Anybody ever thirsty yet? You just feel thirsty? Yeah. There's a hormone, if my memory serves me right, it's been years since I've mentioned that hormone. I think it's DH. Is there ADH? ADH. ADH. So the antidiuretic hormone. Antidiuretic hormone, yes. It stimulates your need for water. So when the body releases the antidiuretic hormone, what happens is that the the loop of henley basically becomes open and soaks up every god thing so you know lose nothing right so for people who thirsty and not drink water oh my god drink a bottle of pepsi uh -uh, i wouldn't recommend it it's not healthy your body wants water agua i don't know what in any other language so just stick with the agua oh jamaican patwa water yes no, that's the nephron. Simple one, too. I want to know the urine comprises of 
sodium chloride, potassium chloride, urea, and water. That's the whole part of the, the, the urine. And fun fact, I don't think most of y'all will find this fun. If you are stranded in the desert, hope none of y'all ever get stranded, it's healthy to actually drink your urine. Yeah, yeah, roll your eye. But it's sterile. Your urine is sterile. You can't no, get it. That nasty. If you're stuck in the desert with no water, you ain't gonna waste nothing. Sir? Mm -hmm. I also heard like if you're stuck at sea, it's better to drink your pee than the sea water. Exactly. It's it's not a joke. The sea water will dehydrate you very fast. Very, very fast. All right, so yeah, we know the formation of urine. We know so nothing excess. We know the excess water situation. We already. We not talk about it. No, the kidneys and diabetic disease. No, diabetic persons. I'm not sure if anybody here is diabetic. Uh, yes. In the chat, somebody said, but isn't it waste? Wouldn't that be toxic? That's and where so you're. That. That's where you're running a bit of a problem, dear. There's a particular level. That your body will shut down, but there's a particular level where you can operate. Same like you know, some people can hold them breath, hold them breath for long before they pass out. Yeah, there's a particular level that your body can tolerate. So it has its extremes, and it have a little range where we not normally like cross, but when it reaches that, there's a there's a little run weight of where your body can tolerate before it shut down. So yeah. So it is toxic, but we are rather dead fanter, so I drink your urine. And don't answer that because most of you are going to say no, you're not drink it because point of reference, you're not in the situation. If you if you dip on it, you're going to end up drinking just to survive. Now, the point of the kidney disease. You ever notice when doctor said to you, if you're PP, sugar of sugar, you ever, at, well, say Jamaicans would say, if you're PP of sugar in it, you're diabetic? Yes, yes sir. I'm you sick of PP. Okay, you know why? No, sir. Is it that your nephrons are damaged? Yeah, your nephrons are damaged. That's the reason. Kidneys are the first thing diabetes hits. So the kid, because all right, as much as glucose is healthy in your system, it is like a wrecking ball if you don't control it. Because the glucose can simply can easily become acidic under certain conditions. So it can wreck your system. Now, diabetes can cause the small blood vessels in the, in the kidneys to be damaged. That's the first thing. Second thing, now, the diabe diabetes can basically destroy your Bo um, Bowman's capsule and your glomerulus. Right? And it can affect your, your, your basic asthma regulation. So most persons who are diabetic, you notice that their body start build the water in their feet because the body can't process that water completely enough to get it out, right? Because the nephrons are damaged. Now, and next thing now with the kidney and diabetes, yeah, so protein, because it not absorb properly, it not function good. It's like you have a whole charger and you have a twist and bend, bend up if you get like a charger out of it. That's basically what happened to the nephron. Where you can twist and bend, bend up, forget it where you want. What happens is that because it's damaged, it's not filtering properly, some of the, the processes leak out. Say, if a person who know about the pipe, them where you have to tie, tie every little one and two things on the pipe so the water flow, yeah, that's what happens. But we're not on a tie, tie, so it leaks out. And that's why when them test your urine, then we ask, oh, you're not, you're not on a blood in your urine, so them know say your kidneys are all right. No, high blood pressure can also damage the kidneys. Right, so if there's more force going to because there's a particular force that the glomerulus works off of, if too much force are going in there, it will bust it literally, it can explode. And the kidneys also may be damaged through infections, drugs, kidney stones. Trust me, kidney stones are painful, very, very painful. But infections, there are particular diseases that attack the attacks the kidneys. Particular drugs. Um, anybody else are familiar with um? Hold on, let me see if I remember. Augmenting. Is it augmenting the antibiotic? One big pill antibiotic. Yes, sir. You ever notice that it makes your urine have a particular smell? Yes, sir. It smells like the something antibiotic. Okay, 
because the molecules pass and that's what them saying if you take augmenting too long because it actually slightly purges your 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 thing and your sweat so yeah it it the augmenting operates on a molecular level you know so when I find about you it's on a molecular level, and that's why your your body starts to excrete it right in every system in your body. That's the whole point of it. Okay, kidney disease, kidney. Okay, there would have been movement on bones or whatever. All right. So when I get them, never say movement or company exam, but I don't trust them because based on that maths paper that I saw the other day. My purpose to believe so them set up, setting up. And I ask, you know, exactly so. Exactly. Persons who I actually teach will remember when I looked on them the other day and I said to them, ladies, please ensure you study everything because they will ask you questions that even them never, they never put on the paper. So my girl, don't follow the list, yeah? Do not follow the list. That list is setting you up to be a feel. But Somebody say I can't change your past. No, what's the next topic we're going to go over? We'll go to digestion, excretion, um, continuity and variation. Ah, continuity. Oh, yeah. Question. What exactly about continuity and variation exactly? Because looking at the topic is a very wide topic. Meiosis and mitosis. You got to be kidding me. That's your, that's your problem? It's the whole topic. So meiosis and mitosis. Jada would do nutrition. We fi- finish nutrition. All right. S- which another easier upon the brain? Look on the heart and then go to yeah. I'm gonna look on the heart first. All right. Okay. No. Yeah. Reproduction. Okay. Let's see. Oh, we have about 15 minutes. All right. Let's hope your brains can manage. Let's go through um the 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 the. the heart first i don't think i need to pull up a powerpoint for the heart everybody knows how the heart looks right yes sir everybody know if you draw the heart right yes sir okay i'm gonna ask you the 10 questions or 20 questions that them always ask upon the exam ready first question which blood vessel carries is the only blood vessel to carry deoxygenated blood? Which artery is the only artery to carry deoxygenated blood? Pulmonary artery. Pulmonary artery. Okay, good. Which vein is the only vein to carry oxygenated blood? Pulmonary vein. Pulmonary vein. Where is the tricuspid valve located? Tricuspid valve. Right, right under right, 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 left, right, left, right, left, right, 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 between so, the right atrium and the right ventricle. Okay. And where does the and where is the bicuspid located? Between the left atrium and the left. Okay. Question. Which heart which section of the heart is the strongest muscle? It's the head. Left it's side. The, left, the left side. Left where? Third ventricle. The left, left ventricle. ventricle. Left ventricle. Good. Question, which blood vessel carries all the blood to the body? The aorta. The aorta. Aorta. Good. Then now, ready? Step up the difficulty. Why is it that the, bl- the, bl- the heart needs its own blood vessels? And what are those blood vessels called? Why does the heart um, need its own blood vessel? And what is the name of those blood vessels? Certain vein arterial capillaries. Why does the to heart them with nutrients. to supply what with nutrients? The heart muscles. Correct? The heart muscles, yeah. Yes. But why it needs? The heart full with blood, so why need it? There are to carry the oxygenated blood around parts of the body. Mm-mm, that's a, no, no, we're talking about the blood vessels that supply blood to the heart. The flow of blood. No, man, that's for the valves, them not the vein. Listen again. Why does the heart 
needs the coronary artery? Why does the heart need the coronary artery? Sir, so to carry blood to the muscles. To carry blood to the heart muscles. Why does it need blood to the heart muscles? So that they can be able to pump blood around the body. Mm. Sir, doesn't it yeah. need oxygen? It needs oxygen, but why does it need oxygen? Not because the whole function of it wanting to pump blood in. All right. The sure, heart is to contract and relax. All right, let, let, hold on, hold on. Let, 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 let me let me let me all right. Let me just answer it. You ever notice anybody ever eat chicken heart yet or cow heart yet? No, sir. No. No, 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 okay, I guess uh, I'm the only person. So why are you eating those stuffs? You know, cow liver and chicken liver, and them something there. Sir, chicken. No, sir. Sir, liver different from heart. Yeah, but the heart and all. Right, let's not go there. Yeah, every once it once in a kill me. Yeah, my good. All right, so. <laughs> all right, so. The heart is very thick. Blood can't soak through the muscles. So this is a three-mark question. The reason why the, the purpose of the coronary arteries on the heart is to supply blood to the heart. Why? As much as the heart is, is filled with blood itself, the blood can't soak through the heart. Right? So that's why it needs those blood vessels to supply blood to itself. Because the blood can soak through for supply the oxygen. That's why. Cool? Excuse me. All right. Next question. Excuse what? Me. Yes. Uh, are you a uh, miss or sir? If I, had a dollar, if I had a dollar for every time me get asked a question, I'm a sir. But I have an unevenly high-pitched voice. So, yeah. Yeah, why ever? Tati, if I had a dollar for every time, would I reach you now? <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah, because you guys are used to me. You guys are used to me. But, but yeah. sir, even the first day I heard you, I didn't think you sound like a girl. No, but trust me, if you, you can just see me, but yeah. But True. Yeah, you just see me. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to give you the next question in the scam advice, and then let's see if we can figure it out. <clears throat> so, what type of circulatory system or circulatory system does the human body has? Double, double, double. All right, why does the human body have a double circulatory system? Because, because I'm um, Mm. Sir, because the um, blood loose pressure as it has in the lungs. That's not one of the main reasons. Those are sir, reasons, but yeah. Is it because sir, like as the as a as the blood comes around the body, it loses and goes through the lungs, it loses pressure. Mm -mm. Therefore, go on again, go on again. Why do you think we separate one half of the heart and one half of the heart? Because what? It's because it's um, it, 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 it transferred oxygen to the dynamic network. You know when they mix, same like oh yeah, if you you know go you know go mix the brown stew and the curry. That's a that's the main reason why we have a double circulatory system to prevent the mixture of the deoxygenated and oxygenated blood. Main reason. All right. Okay, sir. Okay, which other question? Which other question? Which other question? Everybody know if we draw the vein. I don't know the main structure of the vein is there. Lumen? Yeah, but the what's valves? the... Yeah, the it's main the difference. Valve. The valves. It has I, the valve and the, val the valve helps to prevent what? Valve. The back flow of blood. Back flow of blood. Back. All right, so that's the heart. I think we don't need to learn nothing more. Just... Basic, I think if they go to the heart, they might ask them if they draw the heart. For some reason, I have a strange feeling this paper is going to end up like the maths paper with a whole lot of drawing. Be prepared to draw the heart for me, please. Listen to me, let say the brother Jesus. Amen, sister. Amen, sister. There are almost things to know for draw, so. Question. Re you remember when I looked at you and told you everything to study for the maths paper and look at them? They might throw up um, uh, yes, integrated yes, maths paper. With that negativity there. No, I'm, I'm, that I'm not being negative. I'm being practical. Them throw all integrated maths question pan the paper. 
then give you then give you three different lines and ask for the integral of each line and fit the whole system. Sir, I do. Sir, I'm not them come with vengeance that them hard, sir. No, that's not. No, I'm telling you guys from my paper, I think they mixed up the, the questions. Because <laughs> I think they mixed up the integrated paper and the match and the and the C set match paper. Then they were bad. Because there's a, even a question there, the box, which I know most of y'all didn't do it. Sir, I Sir, am listen, I, I left that question all over. for no other. And all it had to do is times the five by three and then minus it from your answer. And that's an integrated match question. <sighs> What would they know? Wait, make it three. Wait, three. Know. Because it's length times width times height. I remember I said the thickness of the box would extend three dimensional as much as. You know, long we never understand it. Listen to me. I saw the paper as soon as the paper came out, right? And I almost died. All right, so I'm loading up the reproduction. Anyway, sir, let us move on from this. I'm loading up the reproduction thing. PowerPoint. Give me a minute. For some apparent reason, the reproduction PowerPoint decides it now, Lord. Excuse me, sir. You're gonna are you gonna have a session for him? He, when is Chem Extra again? Wednesday. Wednesday. Uh what may I do Tuesday? So you do add months. Add months? No yet. No yet. So you know anyone who will be doing any free session for add my session, you know? Yeah, I'll send it out. I'll I'll ask and I'll send it out. Okay, thank you very much. The physics. So yeah, we have, we're, no we're, proof. we have a physics session. I come up. Sir, is a physics teacher? I'm actually a physics teacher, and I will say maybe the best there is not to toot my own horn. <clears throat> that is so. All right, sir. All right, so we're going to go to reproduction. And then now we can start the who wants to be a millionaire. Where um, one at? more question. Shoot. Sir, do you have a WhatsApp group? Mm, we have the email address that normally something that you can actually send the company email. We'll answer. So if you have any issues or so, or any questions or any suggestions, you can just shoot us an email and say, hey, how about keeping a session at the time, yeah? Would you send out a survey? And if people agree, if we get more than 15 persons, we keep the session. So we have a physics session that come up and a chem session that come up again. If the Friday chem session was good, so we're going to keep another one um, soon, soon, soon. Sure, sir, them free? Yes. All the sessions are free. All our open houses are free. The only thing you pay for is the website, and the website is just 2005 for the month. And you get all the past paper questions. You get like 15 years of the past paper questions for work for the 25 for every subject you can think of. Okay, so reproduction. There are two main types of reproduction sexual, asexual. We all know what they are. Asexual reproduction, one parent, you make a clone. Sexual reproduction, two parent, you make a genetically unique organism. Simple potato, potato. Plants. Let's look at plants and reproduction. We know the labeling of the plant. We know the answer, the stigma, and the answer, the stigma, the style, whatever. We know so the female part is known as the pistil or the carpel. And we know the male part is known as the stamen. And the male part includes the anther and the filament. And the female part includes the stigma, the style, the ovary, the ovule. Why is the female reproductive system so complicated? Even in our plants. All right, let's not go there. Yeah, the purpose of the petal, pretty, pretty, right? Pretty, attracting bird fly, hummingbird, bees, roaches, cockroaches, mosquitoes. Yeah, that's the whole point. And they, they reproduce the, the petals. And point of information, bees only pollinate 10% of flowering plants. Most of the other plants are pollinated by other cockroaches and wasps and so then now the male part includes your stamen which is your antha and the antha contains two lobes right which holds the pollen so that's your pollen sac it holds the pollen grains and anybody ever notice even with the hibiscus flowers where you notice at one point the antha look wettish and then over a particular time it look it look dry and puffy and fluffy fluffy 
that means that the pollen is released, so it bursts and the pollen release. Then now you have the filament. Now the filament is the stalk. The whole purpose of the filament is to provide nutrients of a whole of the anther. Then we move on to the female part now, which has the stigma. Now the stigma is the part where the pollen are touch pad. It's a swall swollen tip where the pollen touch pad. You have the style, which is we just connect the ovary and the holds up the stigma. And we have ovary, we have the seeds or ovules in it. And not spend much time. I don't think, yeah, they may ask you to draw them here for some of that reason. Now, after fertilization, we know that the seeds are gonna come from the ovules, the zygote are gonna be the embryo. No, the ovary are going to be the fruit. The ovary wall are going to be the fruit wall, so the skin of the fruit. The stamen are going to fall off. The petals are going to fall off. Sometimes the sepal stays. And yeah, basically that. Then now, we know the female, the, the, the reproductive organ of plants are flowers. The male gametes are the pollen. The female gametes are the ovules. Now, plants have the ability to self-pollinate and or self-fertilize or cross-pollinate or cross-fertilize. Now, when the pollen is transferred, there are many ways they can transfer pollen, but the two main ways where pollen is transferred is either by the wind or by an insect. Now, there is something you need to understand. Pollination different from fertilization. There's a big difference. Pollination occurs when what? When so the pollen grains is carried from the anther to the stigma. Precisely. So when it turns from the anther to the stigma, that's pollination. Now, fertilization is when that pollen gamete goes into the ovary and, and fertilizes the egg. So in order for fertilization to occur, there must be a fusion of gametes. Principle. Once there's a fusion of gametes, principle. All right, what we there now? That, okay. Pollen grain and um, the pollen and the fertilization. Okay, so pollination happens when the pollen grain touches the stigma. But fertilization occurs when the genetic information from the pollen grain fuses with the genetic information in the ovule that's fertilization. So when the information, when the gamete information fuels, with the two of them fuels, that's a fertilization. But once the pollen touch the stigma, pollination. Good? Okay. All right, what may I know? What may I know? Da, 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 da. Oh, no, cross pollination or self pollination. Once it's the same flower, same answer, same stigma, self. But once it moves from that floor to another floor, cross. Angry. Miserable. Yeah. Once it's from floor to floor, cross. Once it's within itself, self. All right. Human reproduction. Yay. Ovaries have two functions. Actually, three. But one, the ovaries release the egg, produce and release it. It produces estrogen and stimulates the secondary sexual characteristics. Um, it also secretes progesterone to help with the lining of the uterus. And, hold on, don't tell me this thing has frozen. Yup, it's frozen. Now, give me a minute. This power point, so I decided to say I want to freeze. All right, question. Any questions so far with the pollination? None? Okay. All right. Now, the fallopian two balls of the oviduct connects the uterus to the ovaries. The lining on the wall is surrounded by cilia. We know that cilia are the little finger-like structures that beat to cause movement. We have cilia in our throat, if you never know. So, yeah. So, sometimes if you want to cough, you go, <laughs> it's actually the cilia help bring up the coal. Then now, what were they? Yeah. Then we have the Fertilization, the fallopian tube. All fertilization in humans happens in the fallopian tube. And then the uterus, also known as the womb, has the layer, you know, you have the endometrium, and it helps to contract with childbirth and whatever. 
Then we have the cervix, that is the entrance to the uterus and the path where the sperm swims through. Um, it produces mucus to facilitate the sperm swimming of the sperm. It also holds the baby in the uterus. Um, it's like a plug. So prevent the baby from drop out. Kind of, crude, kind of a crude explanation. Yeah, but simple. Yeah. Yes. Uh, One again. Um, is the mucus you're talking about like um discharge or mm, it actually does produce some mucus? It's not the discharge, the discharge would be from the vagina, like the discharge that most females would normally yeah, but it actually produces a, a, a special type of mucus that is like a seal. So if anybody ever noticed, like your father or anybody uh I have do look and like they say put Vaseline around it for ensure say it airtight. Yeah, that's the whole purpose of the mucus. So it's like a special type of mucus. Wait, around where? Around the cervix. In the cervix. Remember the cervix is a little hole in her. What you, you put Vaseline in there? No, it's a <laughs> so it's sorry. Her baby eye. No. <laughs> it were all right. The, the, the mucus that's produced by the cervix is thicker. So it helps to seal off the uterus. Right? So the mucus that's produced by the cervix is different from the mucus discharged in the vagina. The mucus produced in the cervix is thicker and it helps to separate the vagina um, area from the uterine area. So it's like a little plug where plug one hole. Okay. Um, for anybody who have like some other plumbing, and then I use a tangent for tangent on the pipe for seal the pipe. Yeah. Does it prevent um disease that when time the a person is pregnant, so it closes? Yeah, it can, it can, and it cannot. It depends on the type of disease. Okay? I know it's not no foolproof. Also, what it does, though, to and a very crucial thing is that it provides prevents you from leaking. Like when you're pregnant and your amniotic fluid builds up, right? What happens is that, right? Um, what happens is that the the, the the plug there prevents the amniotic fluid from leaking out. So it holds the amniotic fluid there where, you know, the amniotic fluid holds the baby. So, yeah, it's like a, literally like a plug. All right, you know, you have the vagina, birth canal, the receptacle. I don't even like that term. The smart woman, the slide know themselves. Um, it widens for, um, during the birth process and it's lined. The lining secretes mucus. And yada, 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 you know, the clitoris, which is the amalgamation or the amalgam, uh, um, the, basically the male penis, basically that's what it's called. All right. And it's used to stimulate the female orgasm. And this is the uterine the, um, diagram. As I mentioned, and I will continue to say, the female organs are always complicated. They will ask you to draw this. So keep that in mind. Make sure you have at least six pencils. Sir, all of them? Yup. Sir, Sir. <laughs> Sir, it can be the front view, right? Because that's the side yeah, yeah, view. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a, this is a side view. It can be the front view. <laughs> okay, okay. Got it. The front view is much easier. Sir. Yeah. Who's asking for a pouch in the? What do you mean? There's a pouch. This is your bladder. This is the bladder. <laughs> um, somebody said, sir. Sir, is there a simpler diagram? Yeah, I think I have a simpler diagram. Yes. So would you be asked to draw the cross section? Right, the front view or the side view? The side view, sir. Cross no, they will never ask. If them ask of a draw, them just ask of a draw one direction. That would that be the front, like the one that you have now? Yeah. It, it, most persons rather draw the front view because it's simpler. Okay, sir. All right. Good. So let me say now, human, we'll go to the male now. 
Male is simple. Penis, testes, scrotum, erectile tissue, seminal vesicle, prostate gland. Simple. So what's the difference between the scrotum and the testes? The scrotum is the bag. And the uh, testes are the weird, balls. Sir, my yes. One bag there? Or why you take it? Why you see it like that? <laughs> what the is the fact? The scrotum, right? Yes. Oh, so oh. The testes are... Is a bug, bro. Right? Why in the diagram the penis splitting too? It's not. It's up to the urethra. This is like a cross section item, you know, so it's urethra. So it's not actually splitting too. It's a passageway for the urine and the sperm, the semen for pass through. Sir, the the scrotum, the scrotum, um, basically. Keep the testes at a lower temperature than the human but body, right? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. It hold it helps to hold it and it helps to keep it because inside the body is warm, very warm. So it hangs out to keep it cool. And from some males, apologies, but when the time cool, it actually goes back up in the body. So do you have a side view? I think I do, yes. Sir, but does, does the body maintain a constant temperature like right throughout? Yeah, all right. So unless you have a fever, all right, let me explain now. All right, so the sperm works at a particular temperature. So the normal human body is roughly, what, 37? Or 34? Yeah, 37, sir. Okay, Seven. 37. The sperm... The sperm's optical production or the testes optical temperature to produce sperm is about like 36, 35. Right? So that's why the, the evolution, quote unquote, has allowed it to be hanging outside. So it's cooler, so it has a lower temperature than the body, so it can actually produce sperm. Right? That is why I'm not beating out the man, but the fact say yeah, we Tight pants for kill. Yeah. Mm -mm. Not Can good for you. The sperm cold. So, sir. Yes. Sir, if if the 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 what do you call it? the test is supposed to go back up, so wouldn't that cause the sperm to denature? No, it it, it 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 just like how your body will react, your the same thing will happen at this point, right? So your when the body is too hot. It falls, it falls. When the body is too cold, it goes back up. Why are we spending so much time on that term? Anyways, continue. All right, so the male, the sperm is made in a, the seminiferous tubules. So there's some little beanie. Um, Kiana, I hate you. Kiana Moore, I so hate you. All right, let's not go there. Sir. Uh, <laughs> Sir. Yes. I'm looking at it right now. I, I think they're having a glitch because I'm seeing different IP addresses on each of them. So it seems as if they're trying to get in, but because they're bouncing off various servers. So the person is actually bouncing off various servers. That's why. So that's why you're getting that. Um, but other than them, there are some other people in other lists. Let them in for me now. So like um, Jen, Smith, and some other persons in other lists. Let them in. So let's look through them and, and let them in for me now. All right. So the sperms are made in the seminiferous tubule, right? And those are located in the testes and the testes is located in the scrotum, right? Um. Don't worry about the seminiferous tubule. Just no saint name. So sperm is made in the seminiferous tubule, which is in the testes, and the testes in the scrotum. No sperm is stored in the epididymis. I don't know why I like that word, but it just sound bad. It's stored in the epididymis, right? And what happens is that during intercourse, the sperms move out the epididymis. The sperm move out the epididymis, and yeah, you don't know what. Hopefully you don't. All right. Now, the prostate gland and the seminal vesicles, they produce a fluid known as seminal fluid that mixes with the sperm and forms semen. 
and that's the white sticky stuff. Um, these, this is just a quick breakdown of the particular thing. The testes, sex organ, the testes release hormone. So just like all the ovaries will release hormone, the testes also release hormones. So um, they're also known as gonads, for those who never know it. Your testes and your ovaries are known as gonads. And for those who study the endocrine system, you are familiar with the endocrine system? Not really, sir. Okay, you're not gonna study that till about six farms, so no worry about that. The endocrine system have your tonsils, your adrenal glands, and your gonads. Those are what control the hormones in your body. Right? So those are where the big hormones are there. I know the seminal vesicles produce the whatever fluid, prostate gland, fluid, sperm duct, carry it from the testes to the urethra. Urethra, you know, says so urinating and carrying the semen, and the penis is the is the um the whole situation of reproduction for the male simple yeah yeah you're gonna get this for six form trust me six form is <laughs> i will not say six form is not a warning guys six form and c are two different things okay it's much harder telephone no i don't think i need to spend much time on the menstrual cycle I don't think I need to spend because y'all can swat the dates. Here's the killer. No, that's not the killer. Pregnancy. I don't think y'all need to worry about pregnancy. But here's the killer. You need to know these. Need to know these. Know how the hormone them work. When FSH release, when LH release, when estrogen go up, when progesterone go up. All right. Um I'm gonna have to log on to the website to um to pull that up. Right, give me a minute. What time is it? Oh, we still have time. Can I finish again? <sighs> All right. While I'm loading this website, any other questions? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Um, for the menstrual cycle, I have a simple diagram, and I'm not sure. If it would give me the same amount of marks as the one that you showed before, but I don't know how I'm going to show this one. But basically, I have it with the different lines, and um, it says that it goes where the graphene follicle, I think, is. That is where I think estrogen starts and stuff like that, but it's not as complex as the one that you showed. No, man, this is just a follicular one, you know, man. Um, it doesn't matter which diagram I use. Once you have the ability to um, once you have the ability to actually explain it and the information that you show is up to standard to what the examination wants, right? So you know you're not gonna put no no copian pian as my mother would say. No pian pian for the paper. If you see a 10 mark question, anyway, you're not gonna write two lines for the 10 mark question. You know that, right? Right. Yes, sir. Okay, just watch it. Sir, I have a question. Hold on, hold on. Um, first person with a question, go. I'm um, sorry, like, okay. I didn't do anything on genetics. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, look over genetics. Ah, uh, caramba. Mm, look okay, like this. You're longer than 8 o'clock, you know. I was trying to kill this off 8 o'clock, you know. Excuse oh. me, sir. Yes. Okay, so um, for the hormones, I wanted to know the sequence in which they're secreted. So, I'm going to show you. Okay. So, and that's what I'm trying to load up right now. You're seeing my screen, right? Yeah. Okay, well, when I sit on it, by the way, I'm going to make sure the right screen may look good. Biology. Okay. And now I'm do my thing like this. Rock to the redeem like this. She love me when I sing like this, like this, like this. Oh, the reproduction. Um, oh, it's a menstrual cycle? Yeah. So I'm going to do my thing like this. She love me when I move like this. All right. So y'all seeing my thing? All right. So let's go. So here is the diagram. But I seeing it? 
sir. Yes. I think that's the diagram most uh, most persons will have. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, you know, say day one to five, you don't know, say you're on your period, right? So most of your hormones them low. Now, when it comes off day one, what happens is that the progesterone and the estrogen goes up, right? Because what? Why the progesterone go up? Mm-hmm. Uh, it thickens uterus lining. If it? It thickens uterus lining. All right, to thicken the uterus lining. Why are y'all doing this? This is Cape. Let's continue. All right, so it thickens the uterus lining, and then what is stimul- What is secreted? The FS, FSH, and the LH. FSH and the LH. Good. And then you know, upon day, yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, so apologies about that. I can't remember. All right, so the FSH and LAS release, you know, the luteinating hormone helps the start of the whole egg system and, you know, the follicle stimulating hormone. Warm to it. Talk um, to me now, talk to me now. Stimulates the growth of the follicle. Stimulates the growth of the fo- follicle. Good. Then now, if you notice, estrogen is high on day 14. Why is it high on day 14? Is the fox say, right? The FSH and the LH will be relatively low. Right, cause it it got the day but it got low, but the east the, the estrogen is gonna be high because it want ensures on day fourteen that's when ovulation happens and it's anticipating the release of the egg and the egg being fertilized. Now, after the egg is fertilized, progesterone start estrogen starts to go down, progesterone starts to go up because where's the progesterone coming from? Where exactly? See if anybody pick it up. From the from the corpus luteum. Yes. So progesterone is low until after day fourteen, right? So LH low, um FSH low. You know zero to you know about it dead. But estrogen higher at day fourteen, and then after day fourteen it starts to fall, and then progesterone catch the ball. Uh, keep it up because the progesterone is from the um, corpus luteum to ensure say hey yo what I'm on the uterine wall like, uh, maybe she get pregnant right and then now you know say well, if she not get pregnant everything just go back down and then you start shed and period and it happens he- every what every 28 days every 28 days um, so, fun, I yes, is it yes. LH secreted before progesterone? LH, luteinous, t- yes, it's, it's secreted before the progesterone. Okay, it's secreted because that's where it, it's gonna stimulate the corpus luteum to, to explode and release the egg. Oh, sir, so mm. basically, the LH causes the like, ovulation to occur, exactly. Is the LH that causes the LH, uh, ovulation to happen? Oh, Shakon, I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. Tatiana, I'm going to fire you. Sir, with what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are the Shakon? I said she's not sitting a long time in the, in the, in the waiting room. Sir, I have must be four of them. Four Shakon? Yes, sir. Oh. Let them, you know. I have the software to, to block everybody. So we don't have to worry. Just let it everybody. Because I think I think Zoom is having an issue because everybody's using the server this time, especially the Caribbean server. So they're having to reroute the connections from one area to the other. So that's what's causing the issues. All right. So this is a reproduction. We're done. Yay. Which other topic now? Okay, go. 
So we just have to draw the one that you just showed a while ago? Basically. Okay. If they ask. Here's the key thing about bio, in the, especially for bio exams. Do not draw unless you feel like it's going to help your grade. All right? Because you can get extra marks for your drawing, if you never know. So if they're going to ask about... Yeah, if the marks about let's say the marks about the kidney and them do ask you nothing know, in terms of drawing for the kidney, and it's like a 10 mark question. Drop a little good drawing down at the bottom. You match that up in your good brother. All right. Hi, Karumba. Where am I now? Oh, diseases. Okay. Diseases, diseases, diseases. All type of diseases. After diseases, we're done, right? Yeah, with the nutrition, no, the genetics, genetics. Yes, I keep forgetting genetics, genetics, genetics. Okay, I'm gonna load the meiosis and mitosis lecture. All right, now just as a quick intro, meiosis and mitosis are examples of what type of reproduction? Asexual. Asexual. All of them are asexual. <laughs> But their uses are different. Both sexual and asexual? No, both are asexual. Mitosis is an example of, a sex, of asexual reproduction. Sure, mitosis is useful. Sure, meiosis is asexual. Well, 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 ready, ready. L listen to me, listen to me, you know. Because I feel like I'm going to swat this, you know. Ready. Meiosis and mitosis, you end up splitting. You're making clones of or something, right? Talk to me now. When you're splitting, you make a... Is it the one in mitosis? Serpent mitosis. No. All right. Ready, ready. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. In order for, me, for something to be sexual, it has to include two parents, right? Yes. Yes. No, I think, I think I get what you're mixing up. No. I'm asking. Not their, not their purpose... But the type of reproduction. So, already know the purpose of mitosis is to replenish cells, build up and thing. The purpose of meiosis is for sexual reproduction, right? Right? Purpose yes, of meiosis yes, are for sexual. But the, but the way they operate, the way they come about to do them purpose is by sexual reproduction. Because the first stage of meiosis is sec asexual reproduction. In first stage of my uh, meiosis, you're making a, basically a copy of the organism for meiosis. Right, not to mix your brain, because most of them are not going to catch that, lift that for sex farm. Just, they're not going to ask that funny question. They're not going to ask that funny question. Trust me. I, I will stop teaching the topic. I'll do the crash course. All right, meiosis and mitosis. Now, we know what DNA means. What? The survival acid. Very good. AKA? DNA. Hi, Karumba. I guess none of them never watched Del Cita then. Okay. So DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid, and us as Jamaicans would say, <clears throat> sorry for my, for my tone of voice, daddy not available. But yeah, they'll see that. So <laughs> DNA is a macromolecule. It's one of the many macromolecules that are out there, right? Now the DNA is the cookbook for your body. Yeah. So... The DNA is the cookbook for your body. It codes out for every single thing you will ever need in your, in, in your entire life. Now, the DNA basically makes chromosomes. So chromosomes are tightly called DNA that are wrapped around whatever, right? Now, we as humans, we have 23 pairs, meaning we have 46 individual. So okay, me again, we have 23 pairs, and 40, uh, AKA 46 individuals. Now, a gene is just a portion or a segment of a DNA that carries for a specific protein. So like for me, I have the gene for black hair. I'm gonna say a ruler, yeah, yes, I have black hair too. 
But you yeah, have persons who have the gene for red hair, persons who have the gene for white hair, persons who have the gene for no hair at all. Yeah. Now, an allele is the combination of two or multiple forms of the same gene. So you will have a particular gene for yellow um, eyes, quote unquote. You will have alleles that are helping to code out that for yellow eyes. So, you know, you got to have one allele for help mix the blue and red and whatever for get the color eye with your particular one. Then now, this is the structure of DNA. Um, what are the four sugars that are on them? I don't think you are supposed to know this as yet. All right. But for those who know it, yes, DNA have sugars. Let's not go there. That's a six. Um, yeah, because I don't think you're supposed to know this as yet. All right, so now in plants and animals, the DNAs are tightly tucked together in chromosomes. In contrast, the bacteria knows the bacteria DNA float around. Um, quick information. If you look under a microscope, you will not see chromosomes. When are chromosomes formed? Prophase. Prophase. Prophase are when the cell is about to split. Otherwise, so much you will... It are gonna be just this, the thread around the place. You only see chromosomes just when the cells are about to split. It's just a fact. All right. Then now we have my little yeah. friend. Yes. So about the splitting up of cells normally occurs in meiosis. In meiosis and mitosis, splitting of the cells. But you when you will, if you look under a microscope right now, if you take any blood vessel or any cell from your body right now, right, and look under a microscope, it's a one in a million chance you will actually see a chromosome. Because chromosomes only form when your cell is about to split, either by meiosis or mitosis. Otherwise, it just exists as a thread like DNA. So it's just like, so when you're going to move out to your house, you start pack up your bag then. You're not going to keep your bag packed for the world for 15 years of your life. You're going to pack your bag when you're about to move. Am I wrong? I hope I'm not stepping on any toes. Question? Comments? Am I lost? Are you lost? No, sir. We understand. Okay. All right, so this is how, how the chromosomes make. A single strong DNA wraps around a protein known as a histone, forming a nucleosome. Then now that nucleosome coil again to form a chromatin. Then the chromatin wrap again for make the full chromosomes. Ready again? You have the DNA wrap around the histones to make nucleosome. Then nucleosome wrap again for make chromatins. Then chromatins wrap to make chromosomes. So it's DNA plus histones. Give you a nucleosome, then chromatins, then chromosomes. Say it with me. DNA, nucleosome, chromatins, chromosomes. One more time. DNA, nucleosome, chromatins, chromosomes. Yay. Hmm? Now I got it. All right. Anybody else? Uh, last yeah, trust me. If you can't find a way to swat it, if you can't find a way to swat again. this, if you can find a way to swat this, you are good. Right? So here we go DNA, nucleosome, chromatins, chromosomes. That's the order. That's not the meat of the matter, though. But Okay, we know we have 23. I we know we have one pair out of the 23 that are sex cells, meaning we have the X and Y and you have your Y and X, X and you have your X and Y. All right, good. Then now 23, one pair is sex cells, other cell, other ones are non-sex cells. So only one pair out of all of the 23 are sex cells. The rest 22, they are just regular. No, nothing to do with them live cell. Then now, uh, yada, yada, mitosis. Now, how I normally remember mitosis? Ip, mat. That's how I remember it. Ip, 
mat. Literally. Ip mat. I P M A T. Interface, proface, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Ip mat. Now, there's a thing I want you to remember and keep in mind. With mitosis, you have what type of cells? Haploid or diploid? Deployed. 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 Very good. So a diploid cell. Watch me now. How in God green earth we have 46 chromosomes and we end up back with 46 in a each. What that means? Say? What means? Say? What do you think? Go on. No, not from each parent. Remember my toesis doesn't... Eh, eh? It's not because of splitting. Remember, no, mitosis is just when you split a regular cell, like a cell, a multiple. Because they call them by the centromere. Not because of the centromere, no. Remember, no, every cell of 46, follow me. Every cell of 46, right? And then it creates the chromosomes, and then it split. And when it split, it still end up with 46. Where you think happened? Um, because they replicate itself, so it's it still going to have identical. Very good. So when you read six form, you're going to find out, say, at just a split instance in the whole cell action in the body, what happens is that there are more than 46 chromosomes. They're actually at one point, just before the cell split, there's 92 in the cell. And that's why when it splits, end up with 46 and 46. When you read six form, you're going to learn about helicase, Right? And you're gonna find out it's a helicase unzips the DNA and it copies itself and they end up with double at each, so you end up with 46, 46, and that's why when it's split, yeah. Well, that's a six form. Let's not stress yourself. Just know it mat. Interface, proface, metaphase, anaphase. Hey god. No, when I talk about this, asexual reproduction is for my process mainly. And we undergo asexual reproduction with our cells, right? Because what is that um, we have to repair ourselves, repair cells. So let's go. Prophase, we know so the chromatins condense to form chromosome threads. The nucleolus disappears. The rod-like structures called fin the fi spindle fibers are formed and they basically grow to the century holes. Then the nuclear membrane breaks down. Then now we have the metaphase. Now the metaphase then move to the opposite poles, which is the centrioles. We have the spindle fibers. And then now the spindle fibers connect to the chromosomes and the chromosomes align themselves at the equator. Boom, bang, yeah, equator. Then now we got some boom from metaphase, anaphase, centromere split, chromatin separate, the chromatins then pull to the opposite side, and then the cell elongates, telophase, and it's a split. Yes, you can. As I say, guys, when you're doing these kind of things in the exam, it helps when you use diagrams. So let's say, for instance, in the exam, right? And you remember, Jesus Christ, but oh, the stage jungle. If you draw the diagrams, just like I see it right here, so you will still get the mark. Or half of the marks. So if you were 10, you might get 8 out of 10. Yeah? They can't mark you down for that. Because you've shown a level of understanding for the content that is being asked. All right. So just know, so prophase, that way it makes the chromosomes disappear. Metaphase, they line up at the equator. Anaphase, they pull apart. Telophase, the new cell form. Split up and you get your haploid cell. Your diploid cells, I should say. Then now, the purpose of meiosis. Growth, repair, asexual reproduction, and cloning. All right, so that's the whole purpose of meiosis. Ah, yeah, yeah, mitosis. Yeah, 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 mitosis. My apologies. The brain around hot. Turn on the phone. All right, meiosis now. That's not. All right, now meiosis um, is basically. Meiosis is this. Meiosis is basically mitosis happening two times. Right? 
but there's a specific reason. Now, you, here's this word I mentioned earlier, gonads. Now, the gonads are your ovaries and your testes. Now, with meiosis, what actually happens is that the cells undergo meiosis to produce gametes with half the number of chromosome cells from the parent cell. All right? So, we have meiosis 1, we have meiosis 2. So, follow with me. Now, okay, we have prophase 1. What happens in prophase 1? It's chromosome them form. The chromosomes are formed. And there's a phenomena called the crossover effect. So what happens is that the chromosomes in prophase 1, they touch each other and exchange information. Right? Then now the general things happen, just like the regular stage them. General things happen. Pro metaphase line up at the equator, then anaphase and pull apart and telophase in your cell. But what happens now, you have a prophase 2. Prophase 2, the same thing happens a second time where them go through it, the nucleus disappears and them line up at the equator. But here's a key thing you need to keep in mind. You see, if you dry it, if you put metaphase one, the chrome or something then with the spinner fiber side to side, if you put it for metaphase two, you can't put it side to side. It has to be 90 degrees from the original spot. So in the metaphase one, if you put it side to side, in a metaphase two, you have to put it top and bottom. All right? What exactly, folks? You can't just, you can't just give me a broad topic. I'm just going to like 16 different things a while ago. All right. So ready again. Prophase one. There's a phenomenon known as crossover. So at crossover, the genetic materials, some genetic materials are exchanged. That's what happens at crossover. Some genetic information at crossover happens, and that happens at prophase one. Then now it undergoes the regular mitosis process where lines up at the equator, splits apart. The only difference is that for prophase one, crossover happens. Then now, same little things happen, telophase, anaphase, and then we go to prophase two. Prophase two. It's just mitosis happening again. But in this case, you are going to basically split the 46 into 23. So the 23 pairs are going to be split up, leaving you with a haploid set of cells. So the only difference and only issue you can buck up with the meiosis, right, is the fact that members of prophase 1 have crossover. Then members say with metaphase 2, you cannot draw back the spindle fibers them the same side. So if you're in a metaphase 1, you did have it as side to side. In a metaphase 2, you have to put it top to bottom. Because if you put it back side to side, you will get it wrong. All right? You have to put it at a difference. If you do it side so to side. What, as in, which, what the opposite of side to side? Like go up, down first and then side to side. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just make sure so you don't put them at the same place. If you metaphase one, put your different 90 degrees out of meta if you metaphase two. You will get them wrong if you don't do it like that. And then you go through the anaphase and telophase, and that's that. So I think I have a nice little video to summarize that. Hold on, give me a minute. I think I'm going to let you watch that video. Uh, that section of the video when we actually break that down and then we um, hmm. all right buddy see my screen yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. skip Hold on Answer the question, Afamel. Diploid. Haploid. Haploid. Haploid, sir. Haploid. Someone said diploid. Hello. Sure. I continue. All right. 
haploid very good all right so i'm gonna so start gonna this be, on the top then so we're gonna be looking at right, you want to play the world video or you want to just go through the summary okay. part the world video yes it is. Summary. make up your mind whole video or summary whole video and can i put it on me yes sir whole video all right i'm gonna do the whole video meiosis no no with meiosis it's basically similar to mitosis but with a slight variation where a little exchange happens now meiosis is basically mitosis occurring twice so if you notice that in most meiosis textbooks you'll see that you have prophase one prophase two or anaphase one, anaphase two, or metaphase one, and met because the mitosis process occurs twice, but with a slight little variation. We're gonna examine that today. Now, meiosis. Meiosis takes place in the gonads, meaning the ovaries and testes. Now, cells that have undergone meiosis will produce gametes containing half the number of chromosomes of the parent cell right unlike mitosis meiosis is made up of two main phases meiosis one and meiosis two so key difference with meiosis and mitosis mitosis at the end of mitosis you have 23 pairs of chromosomes right which equals to the 46 but what happens with meiosis you end up having 23 chromosomes so again mitosis you have the full 46 chromosomes which equal out to the 23 pairs but with meiosis you only have 23 chromosomes so you end up with half now when you have the full 46 you are said to be diploid when you have the 23 what are you though haploid very good so we're going to examine that today now each cell contains half the number of chromosomes as the parent cell and this is known as a haploid number or n so in biology when you see 2n that's actually diploid and when you see n alone that actually means haploid now let's start off with prophase one chromosomes condense and become visible the nucleolus disappears the homologous chromosomes become closely associated and each pair is by levant now crossing over takes place in prophase one meaning that we have one chromosome here and it touches with another chromosome and then some information goes to this one and some goes to this one so they basically interchange the information in prophase one right that's a key thing now the nucleus membrane disintegrates and then we go to metaphase one so prophase one the cell basically nucleolus disappears nucleus membrane disappears chromosomes are formed and then we know that crossover happens in in prophase one where the information is transferred between chromosomes then now Metaphase 1, the spindle fibers form. Then the centrioles move to the opposite poles of the cell. Then the homologous chromosomes align up to each other at the equator, one of each pair facing the opposite pole. Then no, one of each pair of the homologous chromosomes are pulled to the opposite pole. Then we go to telophase 1. For animal cells, the nuclear envelope reforms around the chromosomes at each pole. And then from this stage, the homologous pair is separated into different cells. So basically, it's the same thing like mitosis. Only difference is that with prophase 1, you know, the crossover happens. And then now, line up at the equator, pulled apart, and two new cells are formed. I remember, you know. At the starting just like mitosis at the starting for meiosis remember that the cells will replicate themselves so to ensure that the new data cells will happen at the end of telophase one will be 46 and 46 so both will have 46 at the end so 46 chromosomes at the end of telophase one 
both cells will have 46 so that means that the cell would have already replicated itself to ensure that we have the 46 then now the spindle fibers will break down and then now the centrioles divide then we go to prophase 2 now with prophase 2 if the nuclear envelope has reformed it breaks down again and then now what happens is that the centrioles move to the opposite poles again and then the nucleolus disappears, chromosomes condense, and the spindle fibers reform. So it'll go through another phase of division. Then we we'll go to the metaphase where the spindle fibers form at right angles to the plane of the first division. Right? So here's a key thing. Remember this. When this happened for metaphase one, right? Let's say these are my chromosomes. Line up at the equator. And we have a spindle fibers coming off right this was for meta one when you are doing it now you know you cannot put back the spindle fibers at the same place you know you are supposed to actually have the spindle fibers 90 degrees out of place from the place that they were originally at when it comes on to metaphase Two. So remember, the metaphase one, if you put it at one angle, you're going to shift it for metaphase two at 90 degrees. So you can't put them back at the same position. So like here with metaphase one, we had them here, side to side. For metaphase two, you have to put them top to bottom, right? If you redraw it for metaphase two at the same position, you will get it wrong on the exam. Then now we'll go to the anaphase two. Now, the centromeres, they end up splitting. Then now, the sister chromatids are separated and pulled to opposite sides of the poles of the cell. And we now go to the telophase 2. Now, after separation, the chromatids become chromosomes in their own right. The single microtubule disintegrates. The nuclear envelope reforms. And the cell divides, forming four daughter cells, each having half the number of chromosomes that will normally be there so watch me so let's go watch me we had the one cell right and then now we know the whole crossover happened in a prophase one then we know that we have the metaphase right after metaphase you know they line up at the equator and then we have the spindle fibers forming and then we know we split and we get with two cells them right and then you know this is 46 and this is 46 now each individual cell will undergo meiosis again so again we we'll go again and then we know that we have a new cell right being having the chromosomes line up i remember what we do for the metaphase part you ensure that if you put it side to side for meta two you cannot put it side to side you have to put it top to bottom so this is mine spin the fibers same thing again and then you have your spin the fibers and then now you know that these two again will split to form two sets of cells so with mitosis you get two but with meiosis you end up with four with mitosis you end up with 46 in each cell with meiosis you end up with 23 in each cell so this is basically what happens in meiosis now the importance of meiosis first thing halving the number of chromosomes right why we have the number of chromosomes for that is that meiosis causes the haploid cells to be formed from the diploid cells so you know that we start off with one big cell then they split into two and then those two split into four so at the end of meiosis we get four half cells meaning four cells containing 23 chromosomes don't know when haploid cells fuse during fertilization the number of chromosomes restore so watch what happens you know remember at the end you end up with four sets of cells that are haploid meaning they have 23 chromosomes right so your mom's egg has 23 and your father's sperm has 23 when they fuse together just like goku 
and Vegeta, you will end up with 46. And we know that humans have 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs of chromosomes. So that's why we needed them to have. Because if it's a case that you end up with a 46 and a 46, we're going to end up with a big number, which will cause basically issues with the development of the child. Then now, we also need it for genetic variation. Now, the crossover that happens in prophase 1, where the homologous pair of chromosomes exchange information, it creates variations within the genetic structure of the chromosomes. So it's like you're playing domino, and you get a hand, and you shuffle again, and then you get a different hand at times. So that's what happens during the crossover. So you have a variation of the information and this occurs in prophase one and then now independent assortment of homologous chromosomes in metaphase one so when they line up at the equator and they pull apart right it's not a specific way to pull apart right they just pull apart and here's a nice little breakdown of mucis and mitosis now with mitosis single nuclear division Meiosis, double nuclear division. Mitosis, number of chromosomes remain the same. Meiosis, the number of chromosomes is halved. Mitosis, the homologous chromosomes are not associated. With meiosis, the homologous chromosomes are associated in prophase 1, meaning they line up themselves. Then now with mitosis, crossover does not occur, but crossover occurs with meiosis. Then now with mitosis, it's genetically identical, and with meiosis, they are genetically different. And then with mitosis, you end up with two daughter cells, and with meiosis, you end up with four daughter cells. I mean, I think we need to cover not more upon this then. We're done. Good. Sir, how can, how can I get this video? Um, just head to edunomics.biz and sign up and you can access the materials that are there. Um, can you please show back the slide that you had before with the importance of meiosis? All right, I'm going to do that now. Hold on. Okay, give me a minute. Give me a minute. Okay, who, uh, who who's singing? Uh, who's who's screaming? I should say. Sorry. <laughs> I will not say. What? I can't remember. All right. So ready. All right. So you said the importance of meiosis. All right. So you can take a quick screenshot, guys. Take a quick screenshot and. We can go. Thank you. All right, so, all right, all right, no. All right, no, um, let's discuss variation and continuation, all right. This is, this is mainly a concept that is done, basically, just to see if you understand trends. Okay. Now, anybody knows what the Industrial Revolution is? So I think so. I think it's a time when um, a lot of people lost their jobs because... I think, I think that's the Great Depression you're talking. Oh, that. So when they had changed oh. all the... Um, to select machines of, and stuff. And machines to betterment of humankind. Okay, so that's when, you know, in most of England, them focus on, but that's when them start burning fossil fuel, them and whatever. But them, in those days, they, they, they must, the fossil fuels in the machines weren't as clean as, as, as now, right? So what would happen in that case is the fact that there would sometimes be soot. I don't know if anybody ever know any soot. Yes, sir. It's like when um, smoke. Okay. Um, so what would happen is that the soot 
with would basically settle in the forest. Now, why may I mention that is the fact that there was an instance of a moth, right? There's a particular moth. I don't remember my name, but that not, that's not the main reason. There was a moth. There were two variations of the moth, a dark color one and a light color one. Now, what happened is that during them time that the soot, which one I think would have better camouflage, the dark color one or the light color one? The light color one? The, da- so eh? the dark, the the soot dark? Dark. yeah, because the soot up on the tree, they not the snow, all of that. So the dark color one more camouflage, cause soot black, you know. Oh, I thought it was gray, sir. Sorry. No man, it black, black, black. So the dark color one survived. That no, that means that the white ones were more vulnerable. So most of the white ones, them did a dead off. Until them start switch up back the situation and then the, the, the factories got cleaner and the area start getting lighter. What do you think happened? There was a what? There was a shift because what happened is that because the place you no know, as sooty as usual, the snow start turn white. The guy you know, mix with soot and guess what? The white one them start dead because. They are, they, because the dark one, I should say, the dark one started to die because the snow white and the light color ones them can blend in now. And that now, the dark ones them then start dead off. Now, that is an example of how the various traits of an organism can basically cause a shift in the whole notion of the organism. So, where you think I got happen? Where you think more I got so during the sooth period when a whole lot of soot was on the trees, which gene I think would have more more of a transfer, the dark gene or the light gene? The dark gene. The dark gene. And that in you know, over time, you know, so a whole lot of dark will be about and a small amount of white. But think about it now. When the, 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 the revolution turned over and decided to go the other way and took take on clean energy what happened is that the darker ones started to die and thus giving the white the white ones the lighter ones more opportunity to survive and thus they basically the white population went up another instance with variation now there was a set of monkeys i keep saying monkeys a set of primates right that they were they lived as a troop and there was a earthquake that caused a split within the troop and what happened was that over particular amount of years they interbred among themselves and whatever and when they came back together they couldn't breed no that's a type of variation and that's also a type of speciation so let me explain something over a particular amount of time, if it's a case that an organism, right, splits off the environment plus the genes were in the pool, I got affect how that particular organism survives. So let's say, for instance, one, mon- one set of the monkey, this is actually a fact, one set of the monkey in order to survive, the gene for aggression was passed down because the monkey, they, they had to fight off other troops. So that gene for aggression passed on so you know them had longer claws sharper fangs bigger body built so those genes passed on in comparison to the other troop where they didn't have to fight for no food so they became lazy them fangs were shorter them never as bulky they're the same troop you know but because at the, over time them interbreed and mingle they end up saying so can't go back together because they became two different organisms of the same species and now we have two types of variation. We have continuous and we have discontinuous variation. Let me explain continuous. You see, once there's a wide range of it, that's continuous. So you know, say, there's a wide range of heights of human beings, right? You have people with different um, hair color. There's a different range of hair colors, right? Uh, not hair color. I shouldn't say use hair color. Hair color is kind of tricky. But so you have a variation heights of persons persons that have varying um shoe sizes once you can track it from a far extreme to a another extreme you can get continuous variation with discontinuous my way of remembering it is this 
is either you have it or you don't have it. That's it. Everybody has height. So you have continuous. But with this continuous, I know half of y'all might be AB, half of y'all might be O, half of y'all might be A blood type, B blood type. Is either you have it or you don't have it. That's all I remember from that. Is either you have it or you don't have it. Everybody has height. But and everybody have the same blood group. And everybody have the same hair texture. And everybody have the same eye color. So would that be continuous and that's, be like the hanging earlobe and the joint earlobe thing? My question to you, everybody have it? No. Okay, so that means that it's? It's continuous. Discontinuous, good. So the, remember, you know, for discontinuous is either you have it or you don't have it. All right, so fourth. All right, something wrong with you. I'm convinced. What? Um, I think you need to stop dying your hair. Okay. Okay. Is either that? I think you need to check it out because that's that can be a serious case or something. Are you ready? So it's time to guess what time is it? Guess what time is it? Summer time. Welcome, one and all. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So we have a range from 100 to $1 million. We're going to be asking various questions. We're going to be choosing a various person just to select and ask a particular question and asking for a particular answer. You have two attempts. Two attempts. But if you miss your two attempts, you will get that question wrong. I can call on anybody at any time. So be ready and get ready for your question. So we're talking with a hundred dollars level. So first question reads, what is the effect on the expression of phenotype for a continuous and discontinuous variation? Is it A, C, or D? A. A. Is that your final answer? Yes, sir. All right. So let's see. All right. Congratulations. Anybody want to clarify that one? I understand the first part, but not where you have the discontinuous thing. Oh, okay. All right. So phenotype. Phenotype is your physical expressions, right? Yes, sir. All right, good. Now, continuous variation, right, does affect your phenotype because continuous variation, most of the continuous variation what we have, you can see it, your height, right, your shoe size, your what, what else? Mm, them kind of thing you can't actually see it so what happens with that is that with the continuous variation it does have effect on the phenotype because if majority of the male population is tall and they reproduce with the female population so most of the people are not going to come out as tall you get that? I have a question sure for example your age right if, if you keep growing every day every year you're different 
continuous variation. Your hair length. Your age. Yes, that's a that's a very good example of continuous variation. So if you've actually watched the news and they might say, oh, Korea's population is decreasing or Africa's pop or Asia's population is decreasing is because of the continuous variation chart that they have there. That's how they actually get their models there. Get me? All right. So shall we continue? Yes, sir. I'm going to call upon a person. I'm going to start stress persons out. Alex Baxter. Next question is yours. Ready? For $200. State one. I hear me again. State one characteristics of human beings that shows continuous variation. Mr. Baxter, the pressure is yours. What shall you do? Is it A? So it's taking a while for me to see the options. You're seeing it now? No, it's still on the first page. Mm, seeing it now? No. Hi, Caramba. You can read the um, options for me. Hold on, let me, let me, let me, let me try again. I'm going to reshare the screen. You're seeing it now? Hold on. I'm not seeing the screen as it. Okay, so let me read the option. So first option, one characteristic of human beings that show I'm continuous... I'm seeing it now. Okay, was it A, B, C, or D? I think continuous variation C. Mm. C? All right. Is that your final answer? Yes. You sure? Yes. You sure you want change? No. Okay. Let's see. Correct. All right. Yes. So Shaniqua, this one is yours. Which of the following is the most important for biodegradation? Or degradation. Which of the following is most important for biodegradation? So for like we actually get real money, or oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I, I, I'm I'm hoping to get to that stage. Um, see, I don't know. Biodegradation. Come, this is part of the nutrition and food chain, too, you know. Which one of these are most important for biodegradation? Bacteria. Bacteria? Yeah. Bacteria. All right. Very good. All right. Who next? Kiana Moore, this question is yours. Which of the following relationships may pose harm to one of the organisms involved? Uh, C. C? Yes, sir. So I call the predator, um, the predation, so they might have arm and come inside. But well, they might have arms, so that's two. Parasitism and predation, that no count. Because that's two. Well, on, read again. We shall may pose a harm. To one. Yes, sir. So is it um, comments is when one of them is harm, or but the other one is not affected, or then it's start to see? Mm -mm. Parasism, paracommensalism is when one benefits but the other is not affected. Yes. Okay. Yes, it can't be seen. It can't be seen. So that makes so it what? D. D? Yes, D, yes, sir. All right. Bop, 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 bop. All right, next question. So for $2,000, I'm calling on Miss. Annalisa Arjun. Which of the following, which of the organisms is the secondary consumer in the food chain? The eel. The? Eel. All right. So let's see. All right. 
Next person on the chopping block, Abigail Thomas. The energy flow is not 100% efficient because... A. You sure? Wait, sir. Yes, sir. A. Okay, let's see. All right. Hilton, the ball is yours. What is the food produced? So, Hilton, what is the food produced? Sir, glucose. Glucose, and that's your final answer? I'll take that as a yes. Very good. Yes, sir. Who else up on the chopping block now? Hmm. Woman never stressed before. All right, Mr. Jackson. Identify the function of two. Anybody want to help him out? Can I say it in the chat? Oh, um. So would it be, um. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't say it, don't say it. You want to say what Jack's not going to say? Two, two. Text it in the chat. Going once. Going twice. The answer is, let's see the answer. Selective absorption. Uh, this is what this is what the proximal convoluted tubule. Tubule. All right. Her eye is out of rotation. Go on again. I one. What is I one? One, you mean? That's the um, Bowman's capsule. So I should ask if, it, if ultra filtration will be the process that occurs there. Yes, ultra filtration. Okay. Sir okay. and Trier. Go on again. Sir Trier. Three? Water absorption. Or water conservation. All right, I'm going to stress somebody out now. Brittany Gray. Yes, sir. Answer my question. I'm not seeing it. Oh, uh, three. Um, is it C? Is that your final answer? Um, wait. Um, no. Do you want do you do you want do you want to use a lifeline? Do you want to use make a phone call? Um, I think it's I think it's C. Mm -hmm. I think it's C for three. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Mm -mm. Uh, you have one more attempt. All right. All right, A. A. All right. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. All right. Always making a stress. Stewart. Chanel Stewart. Yes, Miss Borrell. That's a loop of Henley. The best description for the role of excretion in living organisms is all right for it. May I have one for you? All right, so talk to me. Sir B. B. And that's your final answer? Yes. You're sure? Yes. You're positive? Yes. You're sure you're wrong? I don't know. <laughs> all right. 
B is the answer. B is the answer. Good. Fourth, this one's yours. Fourth, what is one? Um, the author or something, so B. B, aorta, not atora. The aorta, good. No, who wanna get none then? Who want, who want try one? We have about four more left. Go and try one. Best you try one now than wait till you go in an exam. Basic All right. Well, I'm going to go and try one. Ah, yeah. All right. Rodney, you and then um, Shani, you can bro. All right. So, asexual reproduction, you say? Yes, sir. All right. So, Rodney, you're one. Boy. All right. Tubal ligation. All right. Brown, year one. Hold on. Oh, I never click it. Oh. Brown, year one. Mm. Shaniqua? Yes, sir, Shaquan. Oh, I keep saying Shaniqua. Shaquan, what? A, B, C, D? Sir, in the office. Okay. All right, who next? Hilton? Hilton, your turn. Sir, so I'm going to get the 750,000, right? <laughs> ah, you got jokes. You got some serious jokes. Sir, which one should I answer? Zelson? Zelson? Mm hmm. This is two parts. It's two parts to the question. Read the yellow question and then you read the part to part up. Okay, sir. Give me a second. Anybody else want to take a try? Is it A, B, C, or D? Uh, mm -hmm. Is it uh, Sir C? C? A. May have A. Okay, so let's see if it's A. All right. You know why it's A? Yes, sir, because um. Sir, is it because the mother carries the trait? Somebody else has a trait. Mm -hmm. So the mom the has, a has, trait. has a trait. And remember, the, her, the dad is an X and Y. So any old, if a boy born is a yeah. good chance him get the small end upon it. So, 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 would, it. so would they be considered um, heterozygote or homozygote? What, for males? No, sir. This... um. Mixture. It wouldn't be considered hetero or homo because remember these are sex cells, right? So what would what's it, what the biggest thing? Uh, what's the biggest thing you need to look on? So when you're working with sex cells, especially for male and female, once you're getting a boy, right? Once you have his once a boy. Right, and the mother has a trait, is a good likelihood the boy will get the trait too. You get me? It's a 50% chance the boy will get the trait. 50 to 25. All right. So you, you just look on this. You can plot it out to you know, you can you and this you can plot this out on a punnet square and get your answer. But remember, once you're looking at male and female, just know say 
if the man not have it, in good. But the mother must carry the tree to her. That's why the boy might get it. So the mother must carry the tree to her. All right. So I think that's that. And I think this is the end of the game. Sir. Yeah, hearing me now. Yes, sir. I've yes. been talking. I've been talking for the last two minutes to myself. Hi. Uh, all right. Um, I'm going to send you 2019 paper. May I, may I did it that already? Huh? So I'm going to send you 2019 paper so I can work it for myself and get to the brain of the tune. What time exam tomorrow? Nine. Nine. Oh, the mother kill you now from early. All right. So remember, if you're doing the question and you can get a drawing to back up your answer, do that. All right. Even if it's like a small drawing, do that. And remember, don't do no long writing. Stick to the information. Just stick to your point, stick to your concept, and you're good. All right, I know y'all gonna do well. Just go in there with vengeance in your eye and attack the paper. Just attack so the, the paper, paper going and attack me. So. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said to me the other day that they went into the maths exam with God and God looked on the paper and said, Mm-mm, you depend your own with that one, yeah. <laughs> so. um, where is um? The class for 2022 begins. The class for one again? Classes for 2022 exam students. Classes for 2022 exam students. What about them? When the classes begin. What in terms of what classes? In terms of virtual classes or in terms of open houses? Both. All right, virtual classes are going to begin in August. So um, sign up with Edunomics. Once you pay for one virtual class, you get the second one for free. Um, you'll qualify for a marathon session for free. You'll qualify for open house for free. You'll qualify for entrepreneurial seminars for free. So once you sign up, yeah, that's for the 2022 papers. Um, open houses are normally held at the last Saturday of each month where we have different um, information. So starting the last Saturday of August, we're gonna go through the entrepreneurial process in terms of stock investments for persons who are interested in making passive income. So stock investments, um, how to pick and choose a stock, how to open a stock account, all of that. And then we're gonna go into in about September, we're gonna look on for those who are interested in selling on Amazon, or having your products and you want to sell on Instagram, how to go through that, accept payments with a subsidiary called WePay, so you can get your own payments in all of that. So for that, at the open house session for persons who are interested. 
Sir, and when can we get all of this information? Is there a link or something? No, just you just have to check your email. Once you're if you're subscribed to the YouTube page and our Instagram page. So if you go to um Instagram and type in edunomics.ltd, you will see us. Um, just check the, we're gonna post the Instagram and so so when we're having the entrepreneurial sessions, when having the open house discussions. And the open house discussion can be anything. So it can be, except for the last amount one, when it was a strictly business, but the other ones that are pop up, we can have a farmer talk about how you grow crops. And almost say you might live a country and you have like extra land, how you can set up your own miniature greenhouse with some things on your house. Um, we're going to have tours where we go to like JPS, Water Commission. And those kind of places, and you see how they create electricity. Because I know most of y'all don't know how JPS make current. <sighs> For those who are in Jamaica, and um, we're going to look to get something with the tourism board to talk about how the tourism sector works and all of them things. If you want to work on a cruise ship, because you, you can, once you think over the age of 17, once you're 17 and up, you can get a summer job on a cruise ship, which pays a lot of moolah, if you get my gist. So we're going to have all of that on session. All right. So I have the email addresses here. Open sir, your... yes. sir, can you type it in the section? All right. So I'm going to send it in the chat. I'm also going to send it in the email. Um, sir, how can I join the room for chemistry? All right. So I will have your email address, right? So what I'm going to do, you just have to check your email. So what I can mark us as important. So for the chemistry open house and the physics open house where I come, I will send a link for you to register. So um, so for Instagram, it's at edunomics dot ltd, and on YouTube. On YouTube. It's Edunomics Limited. I hope I spell limited right. Yes. So Instagram is at Edunomics also. No, um, Baxter, I'm going to, I you would have registered for this. So I'm going to just look in your email feed. I'm going to mess. Check your email now. Everybody, check your email now. And tell me if I said it. Wow. The, the, Tell me if I see the paper. One more question. Yes, shoot. Um, the Agapu classes, they are free, right? They? Uh -huh. They what? The Agapu classes. The other chemistry and the, and the physics class? No, the Agapu classes. I'm not getting the Agape. I will type it. Yeah, type it. Sir, I don't see the email as yet. Uh, hold on, hold on. I, I'm, I'm going to send you more than one past paper. I'm going to send you more than one. Just because I know most of y'all might want the little extra. So I'm going to send you more than one. Okay, let's send 19 and 2008. All right. I'm um, sorry, do you mind if I ask what's the class for the, um... the Agape class? What's no, that? as in what's, in what's the class? For what? For the marathon or something like that you just said a while ago. Oh, for the open houses we're going to keep now, right? Yes, marathon, marathon class now I'll keep till next year again, you know? Oh no, we don't do agap. We don't do agape classes. All right, so check your email now. Check your email now. Sir, I got it. Okay. Um, also, did you say that you'll be um not tomorrow on Tuesday for chemistry? Yes, Tuesday chemistry. More like yeah. More... Wednesday we'll have chemistry, but like, are you going to be free on Tuesday? Tuesday, yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna build a session for Tuesday. I'm gonna build a session for Tuesday. No, no OA, no OA administrators. 
Yeah, I got I, I figure, I figure. Um, this is CSEC. Um, physics, just just look out for the physics, just look out for the emails, just look out for the emails. Here, um, what about chemistry? Chemistry, chemistry, we're gonna keep a session on Tuesday, so just look out for the email. Just look out for the email for that. Um, question, y'all got the paper? Yes, so I sent I sent two by yes, one. Okay, sir. okay, I sent two by one. Um, somebody named Doctor Tor Tornita Seventeen. Anybody here by that email address? She made a mistake in her email. All right. So the thing is, is just subscribe to the YouTube, subscribe to the, the Facebook, the Instagram, and just look out for the emails and the posts on the the, whole, the, the, the Facebook and Instagram. Turn on the like button, turn on your notification. So when we post up anything, you can get it and so. And we can, you can, you can call it a day, all right? All right, so this is it for tonight. Physics, you just look out for the email. Just look out for the email for physics. I can't give you all of the dates them now. So I know came on Tuesday. When when the physics come, I just going to send out the email. Just look out for the email them. All right, guys, so I think that's it for today. I hope none of your brain have melted in your heads. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Don't make 12 o'clock come and you sleep. Rest off your brain. Don't fry your brain before exit. All right? Enjoy the rest of your day.